As a graduate student at the University of Texas, I had the, the uh, opportunity to work with a geologist who actually was the lead scientist in some of the um, end of Apollo missions, like Apollo 17 and so forth. And as it turns out, the, the biggest moon rock ever collected is called Big Muley in honor of Bill Mulberger, and that's who this professor at Texas was. After the Apollo missions and Skylab, etc., the space shuttle missions came on board, and he was the person who received the canisters of slide film uh, of the photographs that the astronauts took. And as a graduate student, I'd wander down into, into his office, and he'd have these spools of slide film on a light table, and he'd go, Hey, Joe, come over here, take a look at this. And so, um, in the decades since, I have um, used space shuttle photographs, international space station photographs, and then remotely sensed imagery from satellites, etc., in my own coursework and as part of my research. And so I have, uh, gosh, goes back 20 plus years of, of interest and, and use of these photograph data sets. Being a geologist, I use them mainly for uh, earth system science, uh, environmental changes over time, uh, human impacts as shown from space. And these are pictures taken from a camera by the finger of an astronaut looking out the window, as opposed to, say, remotely sensed imagery by a satellite. Uh, I want that human element kept in. So those, those photographs, and then in conjunction with Earth Science Week, which is a, a national, international um, program to facilitate interest and awareness of Earth sciences around the world. Uh, they have a theme every year, and this particular theme is Earth as Inspiration. And I thought, well, okay, I've been inspired throughout my entire career by these photographs. I started looking around online, and lo and behold, there's a whole uh, psychological phenomenon known as the overview effect that is associated with astronauts going up into space and then turning their heads around and looking back at Earth. And there's iconic images such as, such as Earthrise and Blue Marble that probably everyone would recognize. They are that iconic. Uh, but those, those prompt this sense of awe and wonder and then ultimately caring and deep appreciation and then stewardship and responsibility and, and so forth. Uh, so there's this whole psychological phenomenon, this, this cognitive transformation that only astronauts have been able to have. They're the only ones who have literally gone up and looked back upon our entire planet from space. But uh, us earthbound folks are still trying to attempt to tap into that, that psychological feeling of awe that the overview effect captures. And one, one instance of that is this book called Overview. And I happened to pick it up when it first came out, not even knowing what the overview effect was. I was, I was taken in by the fact that it was involving remotely sensed imagery from satellites of, of Earth science and systems related things. And then only upon discovering the overview effect online and then reading the frontispiece of the book, that's exactly what this entire book is about. And so others obviously have been inspired by, by astronaut photography or, or remotely sensed imagery and, and, then, and um, the implications of looking down upon our Earth. And, and, way back in the day just just staring at those photographs coming off the spools and the action of taking a magnifying glass and looking down oh one image the one that stands out and i'm just thinking of it right off the top of my head is a is a beautiful photograph of the maldives which is in a set of atolls that makes a it's basically a hot spot track in geologic sense uh, but it's a, a, a almost like pearls on a necklace laid out in the Indian Ocean just south of India and it's a strikingly beautiful image I mean whether it's a, a painting or a photograph or whatever it's very beautiful 
But the implications of that was sea level rise and the fact that, you know, with climate change, etc., that with sea level rise, this is literally a nation that's in peril of even existing. And so that brings that connection between this awe-inspiring imagery and then implications of what's going on in our world and then that sense of caring and, and like what can we do about this and so it's all that's all wrapped together so that that in a nutshell provides an example of one of these photographs that all by itself is stunning but then you start thinking about it what it means and that's when that's when it gets deeper and bigger uh, a nice way to do that is to back away from the planet itself and you can then capture these interactions uh, from these images of these various interactions of, of geospheres and so uh, that's one way I do it. I teach a variety of courses in tectonics and structural geology, which is rock deformation. And there are a lot of them that show, you know, the San Andreas Fault or uh, the structure of the Himalayan mountains or chains of volcanoes from hotspots like Hawaii and, and the Maldives that I mentioned before. And so with those courses, I, I select images that are particular to that topic of plate tectonics. Uh, National Park Geology, there's all sorts of, of images of parks, uh, whether it's the Grand Canyon, which most folks would recognize, I presume, from space, uh, to others that a lot of folks might not recognize, but, but to see them from a very different perspective than simply land-based is, is really cool. It provides a way to capture a bigger piece of the planet than what they can typically see on their own. It then provides an opportunity to connect and it blurs national, international boundaries. They're irrelevant. Uh, it makes, it allows us to look at issues and problems and things we're confronting um, from Indonesia. There are recent images of the tsunami impact in Palu, Indonesia. And so it provides ways to dissolve some of these barriers and, and boundaries that we created. It makes us a more connected global citizenry. And then it allows us to, to view and go to places that, that aren't close by. I mean, quite literally, we can take a look at any spot on the planet, all practically, and, and take a look.